Uh, I'm asking only, have you read it? Have you read it? Yes. And what does it say? Okay, this is what Jesus says a little bit later on in John. He says, just as I and the Father are one. Remember he says, just as I. That means he's saying earlier on I said, I and the Father are one. Like you just showed me. Mm -hmm. So he's now using the same phraseology phrase. And he says, he continues, just as I and the Father are one, I pray that you will also be one with us. So he makes all the disciples, he makes all the believers, all the disciples to be one. Early on, you understood this verse to mean one being. So now you are also part of this one being because that's what he prayed to. That's what he said. He says, just as I and the Father are one, you will also be one with us. That's the explanation Jesus gave in context. So this is what the Christians don't tell you in the churches. See, because he's making a claim like that. Uh, excuse me, excuse me, one second, one second, one second. In the, in, in the context, in the, in the context, look, when you're at home, read the whole of John, and you, look, look, to understand the context that I gave you, and then ask yourself, Jesus is saying, just as I and the Father are one, so shall you be one with us. Is there a difference between this oneness? The answer is, the church believes one second, in, the answer Christ, is, there is no difference in oneness in Christ, because he's using this conditional Christ phrase, feet, just as I, so shall you be. Even in English, it's very clear. So this verse does not prove Jesus is one God. It only demonstrates the purpose they have, one in one purpose. Jesus is doing the works of God. He has the same purpose God has sent him to. So, before the universe was created, Jesus, one second brother, Jesus Christ, look, if he's self-sufficient, you know what it means? It means for his own existence, he's not dependent on anyone, not even the Father. That means he himself is God, himself, without anyone else making him a God. How much of God would he be? Half a God, one third God or one God? So he will be 100% God. Fine, and understand that understanding. If he is 100% God, that's one God, right? No, no, Jesus, Jesus. If he is 100% God, does that make him a quarter God, or half God, or one complete God? One complete God. You don't even need to answer this rhetorical question. It's a one complete God. So you already have within Jesus one complete God. If you now have another person who is also 100% one whole complete God, that won't be one God. That will be two gods and three gods and four gods and five gods. That's why, that's why in Christianity, they have three complete whole gods. But because of these consequences of believing in three gods, and everyone will say you are a tritheist, polytheist, they say, no, we believe in one God. They make three in one. To give you an example, you are a human being sharing humanity. How many humans are you? One human. You are a one human being likewise sharing humanity. I am a human being sharing humanity. I am one human. Together, how many humans are we? One. Three. So you have now Father in this belief shares divinity. That's one God. Son shares divinity. That's one God. Holy Spirit shares divinity. That's one God. Together, why is that one God? Not three gods, like three humans. God stands outside of space, time, and matter. When we look at him, we're like 2D creatures. Are we different beings? He, but why is that not three gods? He is multidimensional. We cannot fathom him. If we were to look at him in the state that we are right now with our mortal human we bodies, it, we wouldn't be able to comprehend it. it because we see God, and then we see Jesus, and then we see the Holy Spirit. He was saying God already came down on this earth according to your belief, right? Yes, right. he ascended. Yeah. But here's the problem. God that you ascribe perfect attributes to, God is unknowledgeable. Do you know what happens when he comes down here on this earth? He becomes ignorant. Well, because, the, because the divine essence comes down, which is not true. He that's separated not himself from the divine nature. Opposition. He came fully as human to do the role that he was called to do, which means he while, separated while himself. While he became human, was he already unknowledgeable also? He limited himself. Ah, his good question. Now, let's, let, let's, let's understand about limitations. If you are unknowledgeable, if you're unknowledgeable, 
you know the past, present and future already. Can you then not know the future? The reason why he limited himself? No, not, not the reason. So he could rely on the father for everything. It's not. He would be living by his no, no. Will. I'm not talking about reasons. I, I, I am sorry. Continue. Thank you. He limited himself to be fully so I can human and fully your opinion on God so that he could show it. us that we need to rely on the father for everything. If he was allowed himself to still be fully God and fully man, mm. unlimited in his divine being, he wouldn't be able to function like us and have sympathy for us. But he limited himself so he could understand how weak we were. We need to constantly rely on the Father. He doesn't but know we, that already. But we are our own gods. We say, no, God, I, will, I don't want to do your will anymore. I want to do my way. Mm. And he showed us that he set aside his own human will. He didn't want to die on the cross. He begged, Father, don't let me do it. But he surrendered himself and did the will of the Father because he knew that it was going to free us. He was going to be the full sacrifice for us. So you, what you're himself. explaining is the reason why he became human or became limited. My question is the very concept of limiting. While God is unknowledgeable, can you even have an unknowledgeable God knowing the future, limiting himself and not knowing the future while he knew the future already? To give you an, an easy breakdown of this. Do you mean the essence of God? Imagine, yes, you what's your name? Angela. Angela. Now, Imagine I know your name and I don't forget, right? And I will always know your name. If I will always know your name, can I then not know your name? Wait, so I have a question. Before you go into the next question, I will take your question. On that question I ask, if I know the name Angela, and I will always know the name, yeah? Because I know past, present and future. Is it possible then for me not to know the name Angela? But God limited Jesus that, that, to the amount of knowledge he no, could know. What I'm, asking, what I'm saying is, if God is all knowledgeable, what we mean by all knowledgeable is, he knows the future as well as the present and past. Yes. Do you accept that this is the definition of all knowingness? Yes. Right. If God knows the future already, try to understand what I'm saying. If he knows the future already, can he then later on not know the future is what? Is because as a human he limited himself no, to know not as a human uh, as God the the Jewish, and yes as God when he, he rescinded back to the heavens no no he while he was here on earth he as God is it possible for him it's like this can the infinite become finite and remain infinite no one says that though God. one second can the infinite become finite and re remain infinite he made himself finite and remained finite until the Lord allowed him to have the knowledge that he needed okay. to understand. Perhaps you didn't understand the question. By definition, infinite is not finite. So the infinite will never become finite in the first place. So when the infinite becomes finite, it was never infinite to begin with. And it will never, be, it will never become finite and remain infinite. Contradiction in terms. So if you are already unknowledgeable, by definition, you can never become ignorant. If you know 100% of something, you know you'll be 0% ignorant of that, not 5%. One second, one second, please, please listen. If you are 100% knowledgeable on something, how many percent ignorant are you on this matter? 0%, not 5%. You cannot be 100% knowledgeable on 5% ignorant. It makes no sense. So that's why in Christian theology, God being all knowledgeable becomes ignorant it's not sensible. It's not believable. That's not what we believe, though. That's not what we believe. Because we don't believe the divine essence of God is limited. All right? That which holds the power. The human body is what Let me ask the you power. a question. The human... No, let me... Let me now, let me ask you a question you've so you can explain. You've acknowledged me speaking. No, no, no. You've acknowledged me speaking. I want so to okay. ask you a question so I can engage with you. The human body is that Okay, so I'm not going to engage with you then because you're not engaging. Right, so, oh, so oh, Angela, oh, Angela. One way to get Does that make sense to believe in a concept of God in which it's not sensible? What's, what, what's your name? What's your name? Eric, Eric, Mansoor. Does it make sense to believe in a God who is perfect but becomes imperfect? No, no, in any concept, not Christianity. In any concept of God, in which God is perfect, becomes imperfect. Is that believable? Okay. Is Jesus unknowledgeable? No, he's not. Jesus, don't engage. 
You're a hypocrite. Don't engage. Don't even say a word. Did you grow up with Islam? Do you believe Jesus is unknowledgeable? I believe that Jesus is my Lord and Savior and He died for my sins. My friend, Eric, you? Eric, the question is about perfection. Right. Being unknowledgeable is part of perfection. He doesn't give the heart. Being ignorant is part of imperfection. Is Jesus unknowledgeable or ignorant? He is not ignorant. Is he unknowledgeable? Can you listen to the question? Is he unknowledgeable? Here's the thing. This is question. Let me help you. Jesus says, of that day, Eric, 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 let me help you to explain that answer. Of that day and of that hour knows no man, not even the angels in heaven, not even the Son, but only the Father. Right. So now, according to Jesus Christ, does he know the hour? Do you know the context of that? But Islam. Where do you Sorry. get the context Sorry, Eric, does he know the hour? Does he know the hour? Before you have, ask a question, let's deal with that matter. Is Jesus, according to himself, unknowledgeable? You're misrepresenting the The answer verse. is no. That, verse is talking about that means he's imperfect. That, is a that means he's not a person or a being worthy of worship. That means he's not God. Right. Okay. Do you, know how, hmm? Do you agree with that? With me, right? With me? No, no, before you move on, you do you agree me, with that? Right? And you're, you're talking to me. Yeah. And you, you see that. I know less. It's not about less. In your heart. It's not about less. Do you gain you know enough. pride? To pray on others. Brother, it's not about pride. It's about sharing the truth. It's not the truth. Truth. sharing the truth. Wait, wait, wait. You're lying. You're strong man in position. Excuse me, please. Why are you interrupting, brother? Thank you. I'm on it's, your side, man. Allow, man. That's how you interrupt him. That's how you interrupt him. I don't want your backing. I don't want your backing. So, my friend, Eric, it's about sharing the truth. The truth must make sense. A belief in which God becomes imperfect, ignorant, is not a belief believable. Right. Say hello to demon for me. Say hello to demon. Islam is a truth, correct? So yes. when Muhammad got grabbed by the so-called angel, do you believe that that was from God when he forced him? It wasn't God grabbing him. We believe the angel yeah. grabbed him and yeah. him, right? Yeah. Which angel? I just not from God. Hang on, hang on. You can believe in whatever you want to believe. The Quran, the Quran that he brought from God is an open challenge to every human being on planet Earth until the day of judgment. One second. You know, you know, Eric, you're not listening. Eric, you're not listening. The Quran that he brought from God to the angel Gabriel is an open challenge to all humanity until the end of the world, including the spiritual beings that you don't know of called the jinns. So, if you don't accept the Quran is being from God, what the Quran... Shut up, man, and listen. Why are you interrupting all the time when we're talking? Listen, have some sense and, and, be, and be civilized. Be civilized. What we're saying is the Quran challenges people to produce imitate a chapter like the Quran right. if they think it's not from God. But does the Quran say that whoever doesn't believe in Allah, they are going to be killed? Does the Quran say that? Uh, uh, no, it doesn't. It says kill does the disbelievers. No, it doesn't. It says kill the disbelievers. No, it doesn't. It does. Where did you get that from? Let's debunk this myth. Hang on. Let's debunk this myth once for all. It says kill the disbelievers. Stop wait, wait. Okay. 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 No one likes Takiyah. We don't want Takiyah. Where does it say that? Where does it say that? It says that in your head. Where? Where? No, no. In the Quran, what does it say that? It says that in your head. See you later, Eric and Angela. You take care. Yeah. Continue reading the Quran. You are Sunni, by the way, because I, I, I don't want you sorry, telling sorry, me you're Sunni. Second, Adib, sorry, sorry, one second. Yeah. One second. No, no, stop. Does it say in the Quran, go and kill the non-believers? I said in the Hadith, actually. We were talking about the Quran. Wrong discussion. Take care. <laughs> okay. Think about what the Hadith is. We were you, talking about the Quran. I'm not that, interested in talking to you, you anymore because you, you, you're not worth you speaking to. You cannot use an, you look, cannot look, look. use a fallible you, thing to interpret I cannot, an infallible I cannot thing. talk to a, a, source just, a robot. Just, you cannot you, use a fallible thing to interpret stop, stop. an infallible what, source. What's your name? You use Jack. You're using a. Wait, wait, stop, stop. Why do you?